And this aircraft has probably the best call sign so far in Riyadh. Call sign Stealth One. The F-35 Lightning II is a fifth-generation multi-role fighter jet with stealth capabilities. American-built, it is operated by or has orders placed by 11 NATO nations and a further six partner nations. The Royal Air Force and Royal Navy operates the F-35B variant, which has a short takeoff and landing capability, enabling it to operate from HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales. It was number 617 squadron of Dan Buster's fame that became the first British frontline F-35B unit when its first four aircraft arrived at Marham in June 2018. Number 207 squadron from which this aircraft comes, which is the Lightning Operational Conversion Unit, followed in July 2019. Now we should see the weapons bay open here. as the aircraft completes this minimum radius turn. So the large weapon bay open there for internal carriage of weapons. Not seen really here at Riyadh uh, since the likes of the Vulcan and the Buccaneer, which had uh, a very similar configuration. But for them, it was to cut down on the drag. For this aircraft, it is to enable its stealth characteristics. And that bay able to carry four medium range air to air missiles or a combination of two of them and a pair of Paveway 4 500 pound precision guided bombs. Though still very much in the build-up phase at uh, RAF Marham with the F-35 Lightning II force. Uh, these aircraft nevertheless are still in constant demand. Recently having returned from Exercise Steadfast Defender where F-35s from 617 deployed upon, up on board HMS Prince of Wales from February through to March of 2024. And the unit we haven't mentioned yet is the Royal Navy's first Lightning Unit 809 Naval Air Squadron which reformed in December of last year and this past week the first mission was flown by solely 809 NAS personnel but now we see the Stovall capabilities beginning to be demonstrated by this aeroplane and this all courtesy of this aircraft's propulsion system the Rolls-Royce lift system is key to the next part of the display 29,000 shaft horsepower are transferred from the main Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine to the lift fan element via a drive shaft and clutch and a thrust vectoring nozzle at the rear moves to pro provide propulsion for forward flight or lift while the lift fan just after the cockpit section is used for vertical flight. High alpha pass around 105 to 110, uh, 120, I should say, knots at 33 degrees angle of attack. 
and all the while they're the pilot modulating the uh, pitch and power inputs to keep the aircraft level at slow speed and at that high alpha. And for those of you with good eyes or long lenses, you will have seen the tail area moving very, very quickly to maintain that level and uh, straight trajectory, all done by the fly-by-wire system on board this very advanced fighter aircraft. Well, now, the F-35B is going downwind. It's getting ready for a rolling vertical landing. And this type of landing is intended to be used at expeditionary sites, roads, or maybe if a runway is short or has been damaged in part, where the priority is to minimize the distance in which you bring the aircraft to a stop. The pilot will be targeting a specific flight path angle and a precise touchdown point, all based, of course, on the stopping distance that's required on the particular strip and the gross weight of the aeroplane. And of course, we're very lucky here at Fairford to actually see this because it's one of the few runways in the country uh, at a public display where the aircraft can land on the runway because of its uh, load rating. Yes, in fact, I think as far as public air shows, as opposed to RAF families days and the like is concerned, of those this role demonstration of the F-35B is appearing at, I think this is the only one where it's going to be able to land on. But that's far from the end of this display because we're now going to see what's called in the F-35 community a trundle short takeoff. Now this is used if there's no concrete available and a short takeoff distance is required. The pilot spooling the engine up to 34% thrust, releasing the brakes, and then once the aircraft's at 60 knots, he'll select throttle to military power and rotate when the engine responds. And of course, in that mode, the stick doesn't just control the flying control surfaces of the aircraft, it also controls the engine, the, the nozzle. So rotating the stick aft also rota rotates the nozzle to the downward position. Now contrast that with the Harrier, where, as we described earlier, there is a separate control for Absolutely. thrust vectoring. Yes. And all of this was part of de-risking the Stovall mode, as it were, of this aircraft's operation compared with the Harrier, which particularly in its early versions had been very challenging in that regime of flight. A lot of this work done on a Harrier, ironically. The, uh, the Vark Harrier yes. testbed used latterly by Kinetic at Boscombe Down, which by the time it was retired was one of the oldest airworthy Harriers, if not the oldest. But it really did help de-risk the process and lead to the sort of flight control laws that are now employed on the F-35B and not just employed on the aircraft type but being used regularly operationally. Uh, with a big reliance on computing which clearly was not available back in the 60s when the Harrier was first developed. Of course, yes. It's now, even by Harrier standards, going to get very, very noisy because the F-35B will be coming into the hover around display centre point, decelerating from around 240 knots. The pilot all the while managing that rate of deceleration and the height of the aircraft to bring it into a hover at about 180 feet. And we'll then see it turning to face us, flying sideways, hopefully, along the centre line of the runway. And the air display regulations, Mark, of course, permit it to become a, come a bit closer in the V-Stol, or Stovel in this case, regime, yes 
than most other fast jets are able to. Yes, so uh, normally a fast jet would never come any closer than the 230 meter line, which is about 40 or 50 meters the far side of the runway. But in this configuration, given that it, it is hovering, the aircraft is allowed to come to 150 meters, which is, in terms of fixed wing aircraft, the closest that you will have seen today. And this really, really is, if you're anywhere near it, an um, ear defenders on or fingers in your ears job. Yeah, it's about to get very, very noisy. All the squadrons within the UK's Lightning Force are jointly manned between the RAF and the Royal Navy. And such has been the case on deployment. In 2021, there was the first carrier strike group deployment with the new carrier involving these aircraft and their first use and operations over Iraq and Syria. And they've since been flying long range sorties as part of Britain's response to the Ukraine conflict, often integrating with typhoons and with other assets. Coming in now for its final pass from right to left before departing home to Marham, the RAF's Lockheed Martin F-35B Lightning.